The Great Book of the Dead, Catholic Part 2 Is it true that you will have to go through a judgment? The answer is yes, but you must know that judgment is a comparison, a metaphor, so you must not see it as the judgment that is happening on earth. A judgment is rather a discernment, coming from him who bears the law to know your Savior, the one who wants you, saved and the one who died for you. It will consist in him giving for you the eternal sentence of what will be your destiny, but according to what you have done, what you will decide. It is your freedom that, at the base, will lead to your eternal destiny. Who will be the judge, if it is your freedom that should preside over this judgment, we should say that you are the judge. No do not believe that. This freedom is there but the standard of judgment and the one who puts the judgment, it will be Christ, because it is according to what you will have decided, in front of its glorious appearance, that you will determine yourself be based on grace, if you choose to love it with all your heart, be based on your pride, if you decide to refuse it with all your heart, that your eternal destiny will be decided. When will this judgment happen? You must understand that this judgment is quite a process. It begins in death, in the passage of death, when Christ appears and when he gives his last sermon that crowns all your earthly life. Of course, at that moment, you discover things, you discover, if you have not discovered before, what is the norm of law, how much did he love you. How far to enter the vision beatific you will have to love and love your neighbor as well as to repent of your sin. At that moment it is what precedes the judgment and then, after having met Lucifer, when he has given you all his preaching, one can say that your freedom, perfectly enlightened, and also the control of you, perfectly you will decide, you will pronounce yourself after an internal struggle you will decide for your eternal choice. This battle, which has taken place in you, because all your sin is leading you to Lucifer, but all your good will is leading you to Christ, this battle is called by scripture, the battle of Armageddon. It's a battle of tears, decisive. When you have completed, in fullness, in the face of this perfect lucidity, your battle, then you will arrive after death, after death at this moment when truly, fully mature, fully determined, definitively determined, having understood all the arguments, does not by having no others that can be brought, to determine you eternally, then you can be judged. So that the last judgment comes after death and it is a definitive judgment, not because you could not change but because you will not want to change any more. As I said, your lucidity, your control of you will be perfect. How will this judgment be? And first of all you must know that if you have loved, if you have repented for your sin, this judgment will never be a judgment of conviction, never. It is a judgment of admiration, it is a judgment of gratitude that you're just judge who loves you, who died for you, will ask. In this case, the judgment can be of two types. Either he says, come in, now in the joy of my father. Enter the beatific vision. It means that your soul will be ready and you, indeed, totally humble, totally love for him, you will follow in obedience, this moment, I would say very touching where he will raise you up to his father. Second possibility, when you will be confronted with Christ, you will say with all your heart, being true, being I would say, quite lucid of what you are, you will say, Lord, I am not worthy, I am not worthy of entering the beatific vision, I am not ready. Look at my hands are dirty, my heart is sal. Give me time to become worthy of you. 
And in that case the Lord will bear on you the same judgment that he made concerning Zacchaeus in the Holy Scripture. It is found in Luke chapter 19, verse 18, Zacchaeus overwhelmed by the Lord who had come to him, despite all the life he had as tax collector of the Romans, had said to the Lord, Here is Lord I am going give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have defrauded something to someone, I make him fourfold. And the Lord answered him, Today salvation has come for this house because he too is Abraham's son, because the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. That means that in this judgment, you will receive the promise that you will go to heaven, as soon as you have accomplished the will that you want to accomplish. He will bless you and you, as far as you are concerned, will implement what you have decided to do, the reparation you have decided to do. He will respect you, in this desire to do penance for the evil that you have committed on earth. Obviously, such an attitude, it is noble, it is beautiful, it comes from a repentant man, from a man who loves the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his strength, that he is ready, not to see him face to face, in his divinity, the time it will take, the time he will decide. So you receive the judgment that you will go to heaven. It's certain, it's decided, there will be no turning back. Finally, the third kind of judgment, it will concern those who, having seen the Lord in his glory, in the radiance of his love and his humility, he who offers forgiveness to every man, these people who have despised perfectly lucidly, to through one of the six blasphemies against the Holy Spirit, this forgiveness. They will have done it perfectly freely, in full awareness, in full control of themselves. In this case the judgment will consist in saying, you will not have the beatific vision, you will never have it, because you want the treasure of my heart and you refused to help me. Well, you can only have the treasure of my heart by loving. And these people will protest, saying, but it's absolutely unfair, how are we made to see divinity face to face, are we not intelligent beings, are we not made beings for that? You commit a flagrant injustice that you proclaim you just judge, and fight, we will fight for justice to be established and we will fight forever until you give in and that you replace your injustice by your justice. These people who are called the damned, are people full of presumptions. That means that they want to get the treasure they understood they were made for him, to see God face to face, but they refuse the conditions. To love, to love the pure-hearted princess, our Lord God to love her with all her heart in order to be able to marry her. It will therefore be a judgment of condemnation and it will be issued by the Lord, who is the judge. It will not come back because these people will never come back. Must we say that only Christ will judge? The answer is no. Because Christ, the first thing he does, the only judge who is God, who became man, he who saved all men, well, his first action is that of his humility, it is that of establishing, with him as judge, those who have loved him and he says it verbatim, he announces it in scripture. Do you not know that you will judge the angels? This means that all humble men will be with him in this court of judgment and their mere appearance for example, the appearance of the Virgin Mary, the humblest of humble, will provoke what I have just indicated, the revolt of the wicked and the total love of those who will convert. It means that the Virgin Mary, by her simple appearance, by the manifestation of her heart, is a judge, and she could pronounce the sentence, which will allow the judge, the only judge, to know Jesus Christ. And it's the same for all the kings and queens of his heart, all those who fought, Jesus says it textually, 
he says at one point, the inhabitants of Nineveh, who have done some good human deeds, and yet at that time it was not very famous, and they will rise up to judge you at the end of the world, because you do not have what you have received, namely the revelation of the gospel, yet their righteousness has exceeded yours. This is in Matthew chapter 12, verse 41. Does the Lord not show himself hard, he who is so gentle, so merciful, since he eternally condemns people who refuse to love him? In reality he is just right. These people are invited to weddings and to become the bride, the bride, but of course, there are normal conditions. You cannot marry someone without loving them. But these people want to marry him to have his treasures only and they proclaim him highly and it is visible, because their heart is bare. They refuse to love him. As a result, as long as they are in this state, they will not get married. It is not harshness, it is justice, righteousness. What would one say of a bride? knowing that the other wants only her treasure, would naively accept, nevertheless, to marry him. As for this judgment, it is definitive only because the freedom of the one who damns himself is total and he will never go back. It must be understood, Saint Martin had told the demon, it is enough that you convert and you will enter paradise. Saint Martin was not heretical. He had simply understood that the demon was not that he could not convert, that he did not want to be converted, and the devil obviously went off screaming, because Martin had said a truth. Hell is therefore eternal, not because of Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, but because of the final, perfectly free attitude of the damned. How to avoid hell? The first questions that arise, who goes to hell? You must understand it and scripture says it all the time. Hell is the person who goes there. It's because of her own choices that she goes. It is therefore based on her freedom, her freedom that she put at the service of her perversion. She chose to love herself, even to the contempt of this God of love and humility, and even to scorn the neighbor. The Savior does not put anyone into hell. He only puts in hell one who freely chooses not to love him. In this case, as he is justice, obviously he is not going to get him into his love, this man wants something else. If this is hell, if it is a place of loneliness and therefore of terrible suffering and the Savior proposes to every man to be saved, well no one would go to hell. To even imagine that hell exists is ridiculous, no one would choose suffering. The answer to that is that you must understand that this vision of hell, which would be defined by suffering, is a vision provisionally adapted to carnal men who do not understand the language of freedom. They would start laughing at what the reality of hell is by choosing it without fear. In reality, hell is defined differently. Hell is the free act of the proud who chooses good and evil himself. He poses himself above God, he considers himself more intelligent than God, but who is also intelligent enough to understand that to see God face to face is to obtain all the wealth that can be obtained in this world, because God he is the author of everything. It sounds contradictory you say, they hate the true God who appears to them because of his humility and his love, and they still want to see him face to face. In reality, they demand benefits 